Spring 2024 looks like it's shaping up to be the biggest anime season to ever air. Hello everyone and welcome back to Skeesh. Spring 2024 looks like it's going to be one of the biggest anime seasons that I have personally ever watched so far to date since I started watching anime back in 2019. I have a total of 26 shows that I'm going to be watching this season which is an extreme number for me, almost double what I usually watch. First and foremost, if you notice any of the shows on this list that you are watching that I am not planning on watching, go down in the comments below, let me know, or hit me up on any social medias to inform me of any animes that you think I should pick up this season. Let's get into the reoccurring shows this season, and all of these shows are going to be shows that I have previously watched that are getting a second season, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these. I've probably already made a video on these, so if you want to check those out, look through the other Skeesh videos that are about the anime seasons. The reoccurring shows are going to be That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, Season 3, Jobless Reincarnation, Season 2, Part 2, Demon Slayer, Hashida Training Arc, Konosuba, Season 3, Delicious in Dungeon, which is an ongoing show, Date Alive, Season 5, Spice and Wolf, Laid Back Camp, Season 3, the Duke of Death and His Maid, Season 3. Udusei Yatsura, which is ongoing. Sound Euphonium, Season 3. And Nijiyon, Season 2. As you can see, that is a ton of shows that are ongoing or getting a Season 2. That is half of all the shows that I'm currently watching. And typically in an anime season, I like to pick 15 or around that number. But we have 26 to go through today. And we've only covered half of those. And they're just Season 2s. So you can kind of get a sense as to why this anime season is so huge. With the ongoing shows out of the way, let's dive in and see what are the new shows that are airing this season. First on our list is going to be Kaiju number 8. In a world plagued by threatening creatures known as Kaiju, Kafka Hibino aspired to enlist in the Japan Defense Force to defeat them. Let's wipe out the Kaiju together. Kafka pledged to his childhood friend Mina Ashiro, over time, life circumstances forced them to go their separate ways and caused him to abandon his lifelong ambition. He found himself employed by Monster Sweeper Inc., a professional cleaning company that specializes in cleaning up the aftermath of kaiju battles. Meanwhile, Mina Ashido is now the captain of the Defense Force 3rd Division. As it stands, he is currently unworthy of fighting kaiju alongside her. At work, Kafka crosses paths with the highly motivated Rena Ichikawa. Reno's undying determination to join the Defense Force leaves no room for failure. His perseverance reawakens Kafka's ambition of standing next to Mina as they protect humanity from Kaiju together. A dream frozen by time, thawed by a burning promise. But Kafka doesn't know that an imminent Kaiju threat is unexpectedly approaching him. So it looks like this guy fights Kaiju, gets turned into a Kaiju, and then teams up with other people to fight Kaiju while being a kaiju. This series makes me feel reminiscent of Godzilla, which I am a huge fan of, and while this isn't exactly Godzilla, I love the monsters and the kaiju vibes, so I'm very much looking forward to this show. Number 2, The Archdemon Dilemma, How to Love Your Elf Bride. Zagon might be the most feared evil sorcerer, but when it comes to social interactions, he's the most inept. All those days studying in the dark arts won't help him when he falls in love at first sight with Nephelia the beautiful elven slave, and spends his entire fortune to purchase her, with no clue how to talk to each other. The awkward arrangement for bumbling sorcerer and timid elf begins. Now, shows like this typically aren't that great, I'm gonna be completely honest, but I feel like I need to have at least one every season. You know, if you don't have like sorcerers, demon kings, or another world like that, did you really even complete an anime season? I'm not really expecting huge things from this show, but I have been surprised by these types of shows in the past. But the elf is pretty cute, so we can roll with that. Number three, God's Game We Play. The ultimate brain game, Game of the Gods, was created by supreme gods who had too much time on their hands. The first thing Reze, a former goddess who woke up from her long sleep, declared was, bring me the best player in the era. Fay, a boy who is considered to be the best rookie in recent years, is the one who was nominated. The game of the gods that the two challenge is too difficult, and no one has ever completely conquered it in human history. The gods are fickle, unreasonable, and sometimes incomprehensible. 
and that's exactly why it's such a waste if you don't enjoy playing it with all of your heart. Right off the bat, this kind of looks like Liar Liar, which aired like two seasons ago. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I enjoyed that show, but it looks almost identical to it. This show is giving me big Tomodachi game vibes where there's a game going on and you have to really think about everything that's happening in the background. And while you're thinking about that, there's actually other stuff happening over here. So it seems like a lot of knowledge is required to play this. I really like the Tomodachi game. It greatly surprised me with how much I was wanting to watch the next episode. If this show can do something like that, I think we're going to have a winner here. 4. Grandma and Grandpa Turn Young Again There is no synopsis for this title, but just based on that alone, you can probably guess what's going to happen. So basically, this just seems like a grandma and a grandpa turn young again and shenanigans ensue. What I like about these kind of shows is these are the types of shows that you can just turn your brain off to and enjoy watching. You don't have to pay attention to any subplot or anything that's happening in the background. It's just typically a fun anime to watch, and that's why I usually throw these shows on my list. Number 5. Studio Apartment, Good Lighting, Angel Included Shintaro Tokumitsu is a high schooler living all alone, but things take an unexpected turn when a girl named Toa shows up on his balcony. Not only is she incredibly pure and sweet, but there's something different about her. Something divine. Just who is Shintaro's new roommate, and what adorable hijinks lie in store? First thing I noticed while watching this PV was how big the eyes were, and I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of that art style. I like a lot of older animes in like the clan ad time frame, where they make the eyes like fairly gigantic. I think it's kind of been lost in the newer animes, but whenever I see that, I kind of get some nostalgia, so that makes me automatically give this show some points and leeway. Now this does kind of remind me of The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, which also aired like last, not last season, but like the season before or sometime last year, where there's an angel and she cooks food. That's kind of what we're getting here, but this time they've added a Junipio. Number six, Blue Archive. The city's academies are divided into their own districts and are considered mostly independent. The General Student Council acts as governing board to manage the academies as a whole. However, the group's ability to govern has come to a halt since the mysterious disappearance of the General Student Council president. To avoid disaster, the General Student Council requests assistance from the Federal Investigation Club. Shale is the city's newest club and the last to be approved before the president's disappearance. Shale relies on the guidance of a sensei who can help them resolve the incidents around Kivitos. If you've played the game Blue Archive, you might have an idea of what to expect here, but I personally have not played the game. I play Ozer Lane, which is another Yostar game, and Yostar is doing Blue Archive. Now, since I haven't played it, I don't think that's going to change my opinion of it. But Yostar did Ozer Lane animes. They did like the actual Ozer Lane anime and Ozer Lane Slow Ahead. Both two very different shows where Ozer Lane, the actual anime, focused on a story that was not so great. And the reason I like it is really because I have a lot of those boats in my Ozer Lane fleets. Slow Ahead was a fantastic show. It was so much fun to watch. It was just happy every episode and goofy. So that show to me is a lot better than the regular Ozer Lane. And this, based on the preview, looks like the first type of Ozer Lane, which might not be a bad thing. But with that, I only gave Ozer Lane those extra points because I had those ships. And I don't play Blue Archive, and I don't have any of these characters. But Anime Girls with Guns is typically a recipe for a great show, unless it is Girls Frontline, and this does not look like Girls Frontline. 7. Mysterious Disappearances Ogawa Sumiko is a busty bookstore clerk who wants to become a novelist after some writing success in her youth. When strange occurrences start cropping up around the city, she teams up with her flirtatious co-worker Adashino Ren to look into them. But Ren is hiding a secret of his own. With their combined skills of occult knowledge, what will they discover as they investigate? Here we go. I'm a huge mystery and supernatural fan, so anytime a show gets these tags, I am on that so quick. I will always be watching these shows. I might get some flack for saying this, and I have from people I know who have seen the show, but Dark Gathering 
I thought was pretty mid. And the reason for that is because it did this enemy of the week type thing really consistently where it got very boring and I could kind of guess what was going to happen like oh they're going to this location and they're just going to fight another enemy and then they're going to this location and they're going to do the same thing and rinse and repeat back and forth it grew to be very boring to me and I was really looking forward to that show I loved the first couple episodes and the reason I'm bringing this up is because this show has very similar tags and a very similar vibe to Dark Gathering. So if this does the enemy of the week type thing, that's probably going to lose me in the long run on this show. Number 8. The Many Sides of Voice Actor Radio Yuhi Yugure and Yasumi Ututani, high school classmates and co-hosts of a weekly radio program, paint a picture-perfect friendship for their listeners. Yet, in reality, they couldn't be more different. Their off-air dynamic is a whirlwind of chaos and insults. As their tumultuous relationship unfolds, they navigate to turbulent waters of friendship and rivalry in the cutthroat realm of showbiz. It's got a gyaru. She has a fang. I'm sold. Two girls, two different personalities. They hate each other, so what I'm banking on happening here is by the end of this series, they're going to become good friends. This is what we call a 12 episode banger. It's simple, easy, fun, and to the point. Number nine, jellyfish can't swim in the night. Shibuya is a city full of identity. It is here on Shibuya's late night streets that illustrator Mahiro Kozuki, former idol Kano Yamanouchi, VTuber Kiyui Watase, and composer Mei Kim Anok Takanashi, four young women who are slightly outside the world, join together and form an anonymous artist group called Jelly. I also want to shine like someone else. If it's not me, but we, then we might be able to shine. While watching the trailer for this show, I kind of said to myself, I'm probably really going to like this. The characters look awesome. The art style looks really good. I liked it a lot. The plot seems very interesting and fun. I like when all the characters who are kind of down on their luck come together and work towards the same goal. So I'm expecting big things from this show. Number 10, a salad bowl of eccentrics. Sosuke Kaburaya, an impoverished detective, meets Sara, a princess from another world with magical powers. They start living together and Sara quickly adjusts to her life in modern Japan. This seems like another show you can kind of turn your brain off to and watch. Blonde, lolly princess shows up, causes havoc for this dude, and shenanigans ensue again. I ran out of fingers, but we are on show number 11, and I'm also going to butcher this name. This is High Speed at Toil. Rin Rindo once had a dream of becoming a ballet dancer, but had to give up on her dream due to an injury. Afterwards, she became a neat and a gamer who lived in her grandmother's house. But one day, she is suddenly thrown into the world of racing. The anime takes place in the near future, where the latest technology has made it so vehicles can travel at 500 kilometers an hour about 310 miles per hour, safely and securely. A next generation race event called Next Race is born, which changes the world of racing. Next Racing features AI control support and a revel burst mechanism. A newcomer named Rin Rindo will make her debut in Next Race and will further revolutionize the sport. I only decided to pick this show up because the voice actor for Utena from Gushing Over Magical Girls is in this show and I thought she did a fantastic job in gushing over magical girls so I had to come watch the show interesting point this is an all CG show which you don't see a whole lot of and typically I'm not a big fan of them I also really don't care for racing I'm really just here for the voice actor whether or not this show flops or not I really couldn't care too much um, this will be number 12 now this is train to the end of the world a certain town in the suburbs this was not an ordinary countryside town that you could find anywhere. The residents were experiencing a strange phenomenon, but even so, Shizuru Chikura held a strong desire. She wanted to see her missing friends again. Shizuru and her friends venture out into the world outside, taking an abandoned and motionless train, not knowing if they will make it back alive. What awaits them at the last stop of this running doomsday train? This show looks amazing visually the visuals are fantastic it's it's stunning visually i can't emphasize that enough and i also really dig the post-apocalyptic vibe going on here just based on this pv alone 
I think this show has potential for me to be the top new show this season. You know, that could change after one episode, but just based on this trailer that I watched. Number 13, Girls Band Cry. The main character drops out of high school in her second year and aims at entering a university while working alone in Tokyo. A girl is betrayed by her friends and doesn't know what to do. Another girl is abandoned by her parents and tries to survive in the city by doing part-time jobs. This world lets us down all the time. Nothing goes as planned, but we want something that we can continue to like. We believe there's a place where we belong. That is why we sing. This is the second full CG show this season, and the fact that I'm watching two in one season is rather odd, or that they're just more prevalent now. This one looks a little different. I, it's so hard to describe. This one looks so fluid and animated, kind of like a Disney movie. Not the character styles, but just the animation and how everything moves together. That is the first time I have ever seen a show do something like this, and that's pretty interesting, so I'm excited to watch it. Second, this show's about music. I've been playing music for a very long time, and I love music shows. I think we're on 14. This is Bartender, Glass of God. At Eden Hall, each glass has a story. A quiet bar lies tucked away in the streets of Tokyo, and it seems only the most desperate souls burdened by their own troubles manage to find its doors. But after a glass of God poured by the brilliant bartender Ryu, they leave renewed. Ryu has a gift. He knows how to soothe the soul with the perfect drink. Who will he meet next? This show gave off way more wholesome vibes than I thought it would just based on that trailer. So I was talking to my buddy Luke, who is on the Hello Hard podcast with me, which you should check out. And he said this was kind of reminiscent of, what is that, Restaurant in Another World? I haven't seen it, but the way he described it, I'm kind of thinking it could be. So there's characters, the bartender, and it seems like they come in, kind of tell their life story type deal. He might give advice here and there, but he just mixes them drinks. It seems like fun, and maybe I can learn to make some new drinks from this. That's it. That's all the shows that I am watching this season. And as you can see, it is absolutely stacked. I'm going to need to start taking some vitamin D supplements because chances are I won't be making it out into the sunlight much this season with just how many shows there are. As I said earlier, if there are shows that you did not see on this list that you maybe think I should pick up, go ahead and let me know. I am more than happy to add some more to this list already since it's you know, full. It can't get fuller, I guess. If you guys enjoyed this video, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and check out some of our other content as well. We like making videos. It's a lot of fun and we would like to keep making videos. That is the end of the spring anime season for 2024 and I will catch you guys in the summer anime season. 2024 coming up in... 12 weeks or so, so we will catch you later then.